Hello and welcome back to Thoughts from a New Car. My name is Carl, I'll be your host for the duration of the video, and thank you for watching. I hope you stay to the end. This one's a little bit of a... Um, uh, I'm not even sure how to describe it to myself. Uh, it goes back for quite a few years. I discovered something that I didn't know. Uh, which is the definition of discovery. You can't discover something you already know. Anyway. Uh, here's what happened. Back in my 20s, I was living in England with my wife and five kids. Long story short. Um, her brother was... Um, 2021 ish and uh, he was going through the usual growing pains that you do at that age living at home rebelling against his parents etc he was a fine figure of a man he was a keen sportsman he played football he played rugby he had a ball full of trophies he was a great pool player too and um, very widely liked in the community great guy uh, but he started to exhibit problems and uh, one thing led to another and he started to become increasingly aggressive towards his mother who he believed to be the cause of all his problems rightly or wrongly I'm not even going to go there uh, but the aggression reached a point where she was in physical fear of him so he had to leave. Um, didn't really have anywhere else to go and nobody else would take him in. So he moved in with uh, myself and the wife and the five kids. Rather than see him on the street. He was prescribed medication uh, to control his um, various mood swings and aggression tendencies and things. Refused to take it, nothing wrong with me, I don't need it, etc. Got increasingly worse over time. And uh, reached the point where the children were starting to be fearful. And I was starting to be fearful because I didn't know what he was going to do to me, or my wife, or the kids, or even the neighbours. Uh, he would sit in the living room, talking to himself under his breath about what he was going to do, to whom, and how, and having conversations with them. It was quite clear that he had some seriously bad intentions for his mother. Uh, anyway, got to the point where he's bouncing around the walls one day and decided he's going to go storming over there and give her a piece of his mind. Uh, short of physical restraint there's nothing that could be done to stop him so rather than that I'm like okay let's get this done with so put him in the car drove him over there and the plan was of course we were just going to you know run shock uh, run herd on him and make sure that nothing happened and that was fine everything was going great um so I turned it back turned our backs for about 10 seconds and his mother had gone upstairs to use the washroom and he followed her with a steak knife from the kitchen and he stabbed her in the kidneys and uh, by which time I'd noticed he was missing ran up the stairs saw this happen bundled him onto the bed took the steak knife from him um, basically sat on him and the, the others arrived and took care of the mother who fortunately was wearing uh, a corset and corsets are good at not only keeping in skin but keeping in blood so uh, there wasn't a great external amount of blood however when she got an ambulance and then the police came and yada 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 anyway uh, turned out that 
this six inch steak knife had damaged her kidney I believe and nothing fatal nothing extremely dangerous but she was sick for quite some time afterwards and of course after that there's no way he was coming back to the house anyway uh, one thing led to another and he was uh, he did some jail time he went to jail because that was the way things were at that time is uh, put everybody else in jail to find out what's going on and we'll sort it out later so that's what they did uh, and then he was placed into a care facility, train tracks, and uh, he was going to be receiving treatment for mental health issues and be monitored. He was he was sectioned, as we call it in the UK. He was committed, and far as we know, he was getting the best of care and everything was all working out and his father never gave up on him. He was there every day, never missed a weekend, every spare minute. He would cycle to the hospital and that's quite a cycle of I'm not sure. I think it's about seven or eight miles and the father is now in his, I'm going to say 70s, possibly coming up towards 80. At the time he was a, like a lot younger. Anyway, Time moves on. I separated and divorced and moved around England, various careers, then emigrated to Canada and you know the rest. I am now working, oddly enough, for as a graphic designer and web manager for a group of companies based in Niagara on the lake, primarily among them, is a medical software company specializing in the software which manages behavioral healthcare facilities, like, for example, the one that my ex in law was in. Funny how things turn around. Anyway, I was online the other day and um, my ex, who I'm still friends with on Facebook, happened to post something as a photograph of her brother from when he was a boy. Nine or ten years old maybe, possibly twelve or thirteen, who can tell. Anyway. Um, and she put that he's fifty-two coming up this year. Fifty-two. My man. So I just put on Facebook, so how is he these days? What's he up to? Uh, I've seen him in the photographs, at family parties and weddings and birthdays, etc, etc. Something and everything's all good and everything's wonderful. And then she just came back with, well, he's still in the hospital. Sorry? What do you mean he's still in the hospital? I've seen him in the photographs. He's at all the events and things. And she's like, yeah, he gets special dispensation permission to come out if he's accompanied by a minder, basically. So he's in the photographs. But he's still in the hospital. And I've got to tell you, that was quite a shock. I thought it was out and everything was all kind of resolved. And although the situation with parents and things are not sorted out, I thought he got a life together. Apparently not. He's been in the hospital now for over 30 years. I'm just having a lot of trouble getting my head around that. Talk about institutionalised. And this guy used to play football, rugby. Big, beefy guy, you know. And uh, spent his whole life inside a bloody room. Never married, never had kids, never gone on vacation overseas. Never even seen half of the places I have in England, never mind overseas. So many things he's never done, never been able to do. I mean, this happened a long time ago, and I'm not condoning it. It was something that 
was foreseeing him anyways and should never have happened. And I drove him there that day. Um, turned my back for a few seconds. And 30 years later, he's still in hospital. Kind of wondering if things could have been or should have been different. And uh, he had mental health issues then. And I'm not sure exactly what his current status is or current condition. But clearly, the, uh, the medical team that he's with don't believe that he's capable of uh, an independent life or he would have been leading an independent life. So he's still there. All these years later. And I found this out yesterday. And I think of all the things that I've done, and all the things that I haven't done, and things that I could do and still have the opportunity to do, and I, and I just feel sad that He's never going to know that. I've no idea if he's still a clear and present danger to his mother. Or whether he's just scared to come out of his room. Anyway, this has been a particularly um, retrospective, thoughtful on uh, an insight into a different part of my life and uh, not something I'd forgotten but something that it fades over time until it's brought back into sharp perspective by something like being told this still in the hospital so maybe it's the best place for him maybe it isn't I don't know. It doesn't really matter. He's there. Done deal. Now, if I hadn't taken him over there that day, maybe... Maybe he wouldn't have been in hospital. Maybe he would have gone there if I hadn't driven him. He would have walked there. He told he was fit. He would have run there. Maybe she would have been dead. Maybe he'd have been married with five kids. Who knows? We got the help he needed. No, 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 stop it. I'm not defending what he did. He, his off switch broke. Plenty of us want to do bad things to other people at times in our lives. Most of us put down the knife and walk away. It takes a special kind of a switch to flip in your head that you don't. He planned this, he executed it, excuse the phrasing. This is something he dreamt about, something he planned, something he wanted to do. He's After the after the event, there were two things that he said to me. Uh, I went to see him in the uh, secure facility. Um, also drove his dad and my wife to the... I've lost the thread. I was there from start to finish. We saw everything going downhill. Saw the increasingly turbulent state of mind he was in was present for the actual event, saw the aftermath with the jail and the, um, and the secure facility, the mental facility. And I do recall, and this is a long time ago, he said two things to me, and he was crying. And the first thing was that he was sorry you did it. 
And the second thing he said was that he was sorry he failed. Now I've talked to people that said he would never harm a fly. They didn't live with him for those six months and they didn't see him in the room the day this happened. He didn't want to hurt a fly at a very specific objective. Um, again, whether that's justified or not, I'm not placed to judge and I'm not going to pass comment. But um, Well, he's been living with the guilt of that ever since. The guilt of wanting to do it, the guilt of trying to do it guilt of failing and I don't know whether he still wants to do it I mean he's allowed out but only with a minder right and I'm pretty sure the minder's never more than three feet from it so enough of this I'm gonna get off the phone and uh, get off the video and um, make my way home to the delectable and edible Nicky, who is sat waiting for me as we speak. It's Friday evening, and we have a wonderful evening ahead of us planned. I'm going to collect her and shoot up to the emergency room so we can get some antibiotics for her ear infection. We know how it all is. Anyway, this has not been the most enjoyable or amusing of the videos I've ever recorded. Um, it's just interesting and I want to share I hope that my ex-family don't object to this I don't think I've said anything that's either not public knowledge and I certainly haven't said anything bad about anybody just um, Give us a shock. Anyway, I could probably go on for the next three hours about this, but I'm not going to. Enough said. I'm going to get off now and I'm going to say thank you very much for watching. I'm going to go home and collect Nikki. I am going to take her to the emergency room so I can get a prescription for some antibiotics. Then we're going to go home, possibly stop at the bar on the way because she won't be able to drink while she's on antibiotics, so I know she's going to want a drink. Uh, and then we will get up the next morning and I will go for a haircut. Have you seen this? Really? I haven't had a mullet like this in the 70s. Anyway, thanks again for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. I appreciate you letting me vent. And I'm going to get uh, onto trading on the road ahead. Thanks for watching. I've been Carl. This has been Thoughts from a New Car. Catch you next time. Bye for now.